What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to connect this CTS601 Citizen Printer wirelessly to your network. So first we're gonna start off by heading over to my computer real quick. So what I wanna determine first is which access point I'm gonna be connecting to first. So in this case, I'm using Unify to manage my network. And then I'm just gonna save that over here in Notepad. Now, if you don't have um, Unify like I do, usually you can find the MAC address printed on the device itself. Um, this will be usually on a label that shows the model number and some other information, but will also show the MAC address of the radios and the device itself. Sometimes there are multiple MAC addresses. So if there's a MAC address that's associated with the 2.4 gigahertz radio, that's the one that we need. Now the reason we do this is because these printers can only connect to one access point and it's always gonna be tied to that access point until you program it differently. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plug the power into this printer and then we're gonna go ahead and switch it on. Now, once it's on, we're just gonna turn it around here and you'll see that these lights haven't come on yet. So we're gonna wait for the light to come on and there you go, the green light just came on right there. That's near this button here, right there. So now as you can see, the red light has come on solid. So at this point, what we wanna do is go ahead and hit that button there. And it prints out a receipt that has a bunch of network information on it. All right, so in this case, it's giving me an IP address of 192.168 dot one dot 41. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the ethernet cable to this port over here. And then of course, connect it directly to your laptop or computer. So what I'm gonna do is just type out here since it might've been hard to see on the camera, all the settings that are on the receipt right now. Now I've got those basic settings already set here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head down here and I'm gonna go to my network settings, change adapter options. Just make that a little bit smaller so you can see. Go over to ethernet, properties, scroll down until you see internet protocol version four, double click that and it'll open up this pane here. Now what you wanna do is make sure that you select that you wanna use the following IP address. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna match these settings, except for the IP, you want something different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it to 192.168.1.40, have the same subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0, or zero, and then for the gateway, we're gonna put the same thing as what the printer has. And these don't matter so much, so we'll just go ahead and hit okay, hit okay, Close this, and then just go ahead and close out all the settings here. Now we're gonna pop over to our browser and we're gonna to go to the address of the printer, which is the one that was printed on the receipt. Now it takes us to this interface here. We're gonna go over to config, and the default username and password are going to be admin and password admin. And we're gonna log in. Now, as you can see, there's already been some settings already set here. Now, remember over here, we took note of the access points MAC address. So I'm just gonna note that here, that this is the AP's MAC address. And then I'm gonna go over to the wireless LAN tab here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the scan AP area and hit start. Now what this is doing is it's basically scanning the area around the printer to see what access points are around you. So as you can see, it's pulled up a bunch of access points here. Now I'm gonna go back to my list real quick and I'm gonna check. So this one ends in E909 and I'm gonna look for that. So I found it here and it says E909, but it doesn't have a SSID. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep scrolling and see if I can find that again. And here it is, E909, but this time it actually has 
a MAC address. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, set to this AP, and then over here, if your network has a password, um, then you want to match the settings. So in my case, I'm using a WPA2 PSK um, password, and then it's just a regular passphrase, and then I'm just going to type that here, and then I'm going to hit submit. And now what it's saying is that it's only going to save these changes unless you go to the save and reboot button in the maintenance tab. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Go over to the maintenance tab. Save and reboot. And hit yes. Now, as you can see on the printer, it just made a beeping noise. And we're going to go ahead and let that reset. And then we're going to wait for these lights here. OK, so about a little less than a minute um, you'll see that both of these lights are now solid, which means it is connected now. So we're going to hit that button and check the receipt. Now all the settings here should match the way you entered them on the interface. So guys, um, there we go. We got it connected. Now the important thing is, is the printer has to be somewhere close by to the access point that you want to connect to. And of course, you've got to know which access point you're connected to. If you're in a network setting that has several access points scattered everywhere, this is gonna be a little bit tougher uh, because you are gonna to need to know that MAC address. However, if you've got only one access point that gives off one SSID, then you're not gonna have any issues at all. So that's kind of uh, just one thing to be mindful of. And then of course, the last step is to go into the interface of your point of sale system and configure the printer. But now you know exactly where to find it. You know that it's connected. And when in doubt, what you can do is just go ahead and connect your laptop to the same network as the printer, go to the IP address of the printer, and like magic, you'll be able to connect to it and log in to configure your settings again. Now what I do recommend is here, try to use a static IP address and one that your network administrator gives you, and that way you don't have any IP conflicts or you don't have that IP address continuously changing. So this is one huge suggestion um, and, uh, and if you guys need any help at all, just comment in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and subscribe for notifications. Thanks, guys.